You know, when Jesus left this world, he said, I will not leave you comfortless or without help. But he said, I will send the Holy Spirit who's the comforter and he will show you things to come. Isn't that good news? He's our strengthener and our standby. So let's pray right now. Precious Heavenly Father, we just thank you that Jesus made a promise that he would send the comforter. Once he got to you, Father, he was gonna send us the comforter who would show us things to come. And right now, Holy Spirit, as we meditate on the word of God, as we indulge in reading the word of God, we pray that you would just expand our vision beyond the natural into the supernatural, that we might see the good things, the good plans that God has for before us, and that we would know what's to come. In Jesus' precious name, we receive that right now to the glory of God. Amen. Live Life Strong, Part 2. The subtitle is, If and Whoever. If and Whoever. But we're talking about Live Life Strong. We're talking about your life, your future, and God's great plans for you. Maybe you've just had some really bad news or a terrifying doctor report. Maybe you've just lost your job or you've taken a major hit financially and it's stealing your peace, affecting your sleep. You find yourself worrying and feeling overloaded with concern. This is for you. God is for you. Let me give you some spiritual medicine right now coming out of the gate. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will march with you. He will not fail you or let you go or forsake you. Let there be no cowardice or flinching, but fear not. Neither become broken in spirit, depressed, dismayed, and unnerved with alarm. Oh, that's good news. God's marching with us, isn't he? Your Live Life Strong lesson starts right now. Focus on God's word and fear not. As Philippians says, be anxious for nothing. Focus on God and magnify him. Take a deep breath and let's consider first how the if and whoever apply to you. It's easy to assume when you hear live life strong that it means a, a life without problems, no bad reports, always winning the game and acing the exam. Nobody ever dies in your family and your dog is now 38 years old. Is that the biblical version of live life strong? We need to know because otherwise we can't set our expectations properly. God's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. But what does that look like here on earth? In part one of this series, we read this verse, and I think we should look at it again. Psalm 34, verse 19. Many evils confront the consistently righteous, but the Lord delivers him or her out of them all. Which side of this verse grabs your attention? Can I ask that? Is it the Lord delivers us out of them all, all the evils, the attacks, and the troubles? Or are you focused on many evils confront the righteous? What? I was hoping for zero troubles, zero challenges, no temptation, and only success, prosperity, and blessings be upon my head. Maybe you're immediately thinking, I don't want to ever be in a place where I need God's deliverance. I just want good things, happy days, and that's my version of live life strong. Basically, you want a beautiful garden with no fertilizer, don't you? Here's the issue in the quandary with a radical insulation theology from this life here on earth. It's not life here on this earth. Part of your purpose as a child of God is to take dominion, to exercise authority over the elements, the stuff to be fruitful and produce. The Bible opens up in Genesis 1 with a newly created earth that, listen to this, is empty waste, darkness upon the face of the very great deep. That's what it says. Then we have God, the very picture, the zenith of live life strong. He speaks his word, let there be light. And there was light. Darkness is immediately defeated, subjugated. Now, you see, that's strong. God's light, his love, bring everlasting change. We're called to imitate God our Father and live life strong, that example, and minister his change for better in this world, for increase in this world. 
Lady Gaga performs a song called Born This Way. Goes, the lyrics go something like this. Don't hide yourself in regret. Just love yourself and you're set. I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. Now that sounds good. It rhymes. But the problem is it's not true. We're all born in sin, the Bible says. We all need to be restored to original design. That means we all need a savior. You can't live life strong if you think accepting yourself the way you were born puts you on the right track, baby. Lady Gaga has been very candid about her own mental health struggles and her thoughts of suicide. God has more for that girl. But it begins with saying, I was born this way, but I need a savior because I'm not on the right track, baby. God help me. Another amazing singer, Amy Winehouse. She was only 27 when she died of alcohol poisoning. A very successful international artist, but her weakness led her to an addiction to alcohol and drugs instead of turning to the Lord who empowers the weak to live life strong. God had that for her. You see, God's love is always calling to the whoever's. To all of us, we're the whoever's. Weakness cannot lead. Truth, however, can set you free and lead the way. We all need God's truth to set us free, empower us, and fill us with the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. That's not something that just happens by loving you and deceiving yourself into thinking that you're on the right track, baby. No, no, no. When we respond to God and love Him now, now we're on the right track. God is the epitome of strong. And you're made in his image after his likeness. You were made to be strong. You're made of a God-like design to reign over circumstances, to turn darkness into light, to convert deserts into gardens, to turn water into wine. It's your God-given design at work and it gives you the realization that you're truly alive. Perfect health with no compassion or regard for others is not how you live life strong. Lots of money with no generosity or submission to God is not how you live life strong. Great intellect that disregards others and is what God calls arrogance, that's not living life strong. Beauty is vain, charms deceptive, none of it lasts, and God says it can't help you live life strong. We're all made to be true worshipers of God, servants of love, and overcoming champions of every challenge, every trial and opportunity. This is why it's essential to know the reality behind how to live life strong. Many evils confront the righteous. Well, that's what we read, right? And the righteous, that's you and that's me in Christ Jesus. None of us have any righteousness of our own, but by faith, we have an abundant supply of rightness in Christ Jesus. So the next part of Psalm 34 verse 19 is, the Lord delivers us out of them all. Well, that's great news. The question is, how? Right now, we're all thinking of something we need deliverance from. How, God? How? Understand this. There are things that God graces us with that are part of his covenant promises. We get these blessings by faith and trusting in him, not by earning it or meriting his undeserved blessings. That's how big and lavish these amazing graces are. It's literally impossible to deserve God's blessing. Jesus paid full price for us. Okay, now that's settled. Now let's talk about the if and the whoever. Here's the second thing to understand related to how God delivers us. God gives us a purpose to overcome and exercise his authority here on earth. The book of Revelation 2 makes it clear over and over that there are rewards to him or her that overcomes, rewards for overcoming. The Bible is full of all kinds of ifs and whoever's. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, if you had faith, you would say. He also said in John 15, verse seven, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. It even started back in the Old Testament. Isaiah 1, verse 19 says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Then there's some whoever's in there. Mark 11, 22 and 23, Jesus said this, have faith in God. Truly, I tell you that whoever, 
whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him, for her. Jesus said, it will be done for him, for her, for whosoever. Now, whenever you can use your faith-filled words to take dominion over any mountain and authorize it to move, and it's done for you, wow, right? Wow. There's probably more than just a few people that would say, now that's how to live life strong. These mountains Jesus talks about represent problems. They could be obstacles, impossibilities. They don't move automatically. God's grace and favor doesn't just eliminate obstacles. It's not automatic. This is where the how of Live Life Strong comes in. If you activate your faith, whoever will dare to apply their faith and not doubt in his or her heart, they get results. That's right. The Live Life Strong results that we all want. Legacy results. Eternal results. God-pleasing results. You know, my great-grandma, Annie Robinson, had 12 children. Any woman that gives birth to a baby, I consider strong, but giving birth to 12 children in one lifetime rates up there with Hercules. And yet I've heard enough of her story to know that she lived a very hard life, marked by much difficulty, struggle, and a lot of sorrow. Great Grandma Annie was a believer on Jesus, but she had no joy. She died quoting scriptures that she had memorized, but her life wasn't a testament to God's peace or strength. She had this suffer for Jesus type of faith, and did she ever suffer? Grandma Annie never did exceed the programming of her heart. She was an honorable woman who lived where and what she believed. She didn't cast her care because that was her lot in life. She believed that. She worked hard and poured out all of her strength, but it was never enough, never enough. That's the thing about this life. Our strength is never enough. Somehow, like many people before her, she had bought into a poverty gospel, a Christianity centered around her own suffering and not the championship of Christ's finished work at the cross. Like Hosea 4, 6 says, what she didn't know was hurting her, even destroying her. Like I said, she was an amazing woman, but our strength is not the secret to live life strong. The deception is to overlook the ifs and whoever's of God's truth and live life weak. We can counter the world's live life weak doctrine. Recently, a friend of ours shared how her daughter was abruptly pulled out of her class and taken to a counselor's office. Supposedly, the concern was that she was too diligent with her schoolwork, too excellent, and too responsible compared to the rest of the class. The counselor targeted this little girl because she expressed her faith in God openly, and her corresponding action was to be excellent. That frustrated the counselor's agenda to have uniformity of outcome among all the students so that she could showcase some good old-fashioned socialism. That's what we all want, right? As she was probably taught by her ideologues in academia. Well, thankfully, this little girl's mom is a no-nonsense woman of faith and used her own DEI language to force them into retreat as the school was stepping on her daughter's right to be, to have equity and inclusion. Like Jesus said, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. As a kingdom of God agent in this world, you have to be shrewd. That's part of how you live life strong. Let me give you three, three things that you must have to live life strong. One, discernment. Two, energy. Three, identity. Discernment, if you'll use discernment, energy, whoever will receive God's energy, identity, if and whoever will believe on Jesus, God will give you the right and privilege, right? Discernment, energy, identity. Oh my goodness, did we just discover the real DEI? <laughs> discernment, if you don't know right from wrong, good from bad, wise from foolish, up from down, forwards from backwards, you either go nowhere in life or even worse. People are in relationships that are in destroying them.
They're taking medication that's breaking them. People are in assignments they're not made for, in careers they're not compatible with, living in places that drain the life out of them, smoking and drinking stuff that's depressing them, ruining their health and sabotaging their future wealth. Discernment. Discernment. To live life strong, you must have biblical discernment and know a fool from a wise person. Charles Spurgeon, famous Baptist minister, said this, discernment is not simply a matter of telling the difference between what is right and wrong. Rather, it is the difference between right and almost right. That's sharp discernment. To truly discern is to evaluate something or someone. The 31 chapters of Proverbs is a discipleship guide to knowing what's foolish, what's evil, and what's good. In Matthew 16, verse 3, Jesus chided those who could discern the weather but couldn't discern the spiritual realities of life. Discernment is a key tool to help you live life strong. Next, energy. People are born with energy to live, to grow. Yes, a desire to go forward. Now, this is a little tricky because physical and intellectual energy are good as long as they're channeled into development, training, discipline, and morality. Let's face it, parents know how quickly things can go off the rails if a child's high-octane energy isn't channeled with guidance, help, and discipline. Good energy can suddenly become wild, even dangerous energy. Hey, don't play in that street. Matt, a father of a precocious four-year-old, said, Today, my son drew in red marker all over his face. Yep. Then he got scared that we'd be angry, so he tried to hide it by wrapping toilet paper around his head like a mummy. Then he promptly ran as fast as he could into a wall and nearly knocked himself unconscious. A comedy of errors every day with this kid. <laughs> I rest my case. Natural energy is good, but must be developed and trained for prosperous outcome, right? Energy is essential to live life strong, but what if your tank is empty? What if after the divorce, after the diagnosis, all the treatments, after the bankruptcy, lost jobs, lost years, and the other humiliations that caused people that you thought were friends to walk out on you? What about now? Have you ever noticed how hard it is to make good decisions when your energy is low? You procrastinate. You eat wrong. You miss out on being with good people, positive activities, and opportunities when you have no energy. You know, when you realize your batteries have zero energy, what do you do? You just toss them, right? Well, God is not willing to toss you away. And he does have the ultimate recharging plan. Don't believe the devil. You're rechargeable and God's got the perfect charge plan for your life. It's clean, green, and it's not an ESG scheme. God renews you. He doesn't replace you. He recharges you according to the manufacturer's standard. Paul the Apostle came to a place of being totally out of charge in his own life. And let's look at our advantage in Christ through his words in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. But he said to me, My grace is enough for you, for my strength and power are made perfect and show themselves most effective in weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weakness and infirmities, Paul said, that the strength and power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul came to the conclusion, it's not about my personal strength, it's about Christ's strength in me. You see, it takes a great amount of deception and contrarian living to program a person to give up on being recharged. To truly be energized is an empowerment from God Almighty, inherent to our God design, renewed and supercharged in His presence. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. Oh, that's so good. It takes energy to hope. It takes energy to obey. Don't waste your energy on distractions to the main thing. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. That means nothing else can or should pull out your energy because then you're short-circuiting your live life strong destiny. And then the third is identity. Or could we say image? 
We're made in God's image after his likeness. If you don't recognize and celebrate your true identity, you will never submit to the secrets and algorithms found only in God's manufacturer's standard. The Bible is not a religious book as many secularists believe, but rather it's a collection of God's laws for life, His principles for life. Approach God's Word religiously and you'll move further from your true identity into the futility of vain form. Indulge in God's laws producing life outcomes and you'll find yourself magnetized with blessing, favor, and fulfillment. True identity is critical to anyone who wants to live life strong. Yes, even more than your God-given purpose, your true identity is priority to live life strong. Discernment, energy, identity. It's the believer's DEI for real and blessed outcomes. You need to get this. There have been many people that have been terribly hurt in life. Maybe you're one of those people. Maybe you're related closely to someone who's been violated, abused, or fell into an addiction because of circumstances that they had very little control over. One thing led to another. One violation stacked on another. And the next thing you know, they're living a life they would have never imagined. You knew them back when. You knew them before they were given that prescription by a doctor that they trusted. You knew them before they were thrown into that life and death circumstance. You knew them before all the abuse But at the end of it all, you cannot legislate dysphoria away. Lowering the bar or the manufacturer's standard doesn't make things work better. It compounds the problem. And therefore, the injury or the damage will only multiply. Even though everyone in the room sighs a sigh of relief today, the problem is death is coming tomorrow. So what's God's answer? Simple. If and whoever, if and whoever will call on him, receive him, have faith in him, trust in God, if and whoever will simply just say, help me, God, help me, whoever will say that. To legislate dysphoria, or put it this way, to make laws that that somehow normalize mental illness, addiction, or rebellion, it won't fix the problem. To legislate immorality today so that it looks like morality tomorrow is a social exercise in insanity. If robbery is illegal today and a violation, then changing the law to normalize it and remove the stigma of being a criminal will not, I repeat, will not stop it, fix it, or make the criminal any less a social outcast. It only adds to the confusion and the offense. Look at what's happening in our countries. The more governments try to normalize and look the other way by legalizing lawlessness, the more emboldened the lawless become. Then the good citizens are indoctrinated with this collective suffering for the greater good. It's Marxism, it's spiritual socialism, and it's a lie. It's deception. It's live life weak. The counterfeit ovation for hurt does nothing to advance individual or community. Let me say that again. The counterfeit ovation for hurt does nothing to advance individual, or community. The late Dr. Robert Schuller said this, let your hopes, not your hurts, shape your future. To live life strong, we don't buy into the less is more ideology. Life can't be an excuse for not taking responsibility. If you refuse responsibility, then you alienate yourself from the power and authority God wants to give you to live life strong. That requires power and the initial lesson God gives us to simply own up to our sin, failures, and our errors. It's not to shame us, but rather to activate, listen, to activate God's loving kindness and forgiveness and tender mercies in our life. Until you want it, you don't get it. Until you say, I've sinned, God save me, God can't even activate his mercy and saving power in your life. You see, the manufacturer's standard for your design requires his forgiveness and restoration. Don't make this a religious exercise. Let it be what it really is, a matter of legal justification where God transfers his rightness into your life. It's a matter of immigration and citizenship. But it's only if you want it, 
It's only to whoever says, that's from me. I receive it. Once we were of the kingdom of darkness, the Bible says, and now God is happily ready to sponsor you in the name of his son, Jesus, to immigrate into his kingdom of light and love. Oh, isn't that beautiful? It's not, got nothing to do with religion. Never buy into all the religious foolishness the world is selling. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. That's legal talk, not religious talk. Prove God, trust in God, and just see what he will do for you and your family. God doesn't make the variables difficult to reach or to possess. If and whoever, if you'll ask, whoever will say, if you'll believe, whoever will call on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. If and whoever, that's you, that's me, but only you can choose for you. I pray you do. God says, if you want to live life strong, Whoever desires to live life strong, just call on me. Let's call on the Lord right now. Pray this with me. Father God, I am a whoever, and I choose to believe on you. Jesus said, if any person will say, I hear that call and I want to answer. I say with all my heart that I want your strength to live life strong. It's Jesus' sacrifice on the cross that I have all my faith in, not any of my own works. I believe God raised up Jesus from the grave. I believe you have given me the privilege to be a child of God with all the rights and privileges. Now, Lord, help me to live for you. I qualify for all the ifs and whoever's, so Lord, here am I. Lead, guide, and bless me according to your will. All in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together we live life strong.